Hello everybody, my name is Brady with OWC. Today we're going to be taking a look at these brand new 16 inch MacBook Pros from Apple. We're going to be taking a look at the MacBook Pro itself, seeing what's new about it. We're going to be opening it up and taking a look inside, and we're also going to end it by running some benchmark tests on them to see how they perform. Right here on my left, we have the M1 Pro version of the MacBook Pro as the 10 core CPU, the 16 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and 512 gig SSD. This is the top of the line M1 Pro chip you can get, but you could increase it to 32 gigs of RAM or an eight terabyte SSD. Over here, we have the M1 Max. It has the 10 core CPU, the 32 core GPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and a two terabyte SSD. Like the M1 Pro, this also is the top of the line M1 Max chip, but you could increase the storage capacity up to eight terabytes. Now let's go ahead and open these boxes and see how they look. Here we have everything from inside the box laid out for you to see. First off, we have the documentation here with some cool black Apple stickers, yeah. Over here, we have the charger for the MacBook Pro. First is this neat braided cable, the MagSafe 3 connection on one end, and a USB-C on the other, which plugs directly in to this 140 watt charger. Fun fact, this is only three watts less than a 24 inch iMac power supply. Uh, that's everything that was inside the box besides the MacBook Pro. So let's take a look at the MacBook Pro right now. Here we have the MacBook Pro laid out for you. First thing I notice is it's completely flat on top. It's not tapering around on the sides like the previous Intel versions of the MacBook Pro. What's neat here is on the bottom, it's embossed with MacBook Pro, physically embossed. You also got these nice sturdy feet. On the side over here, you have the SD card slot, a Thunderbolt 4 port, and an HDMI port. On the opposite side, you have a MagSafe 3 charger port. You have two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Now let's take a look at the keyboard in the inside. So here it is with the lid opened. First thing you'll notice is this big, beautiful 16 inch screen. The bezels are tiny. It also has this iconic notch brought over from the iPhone. This houses the 1080p FaceTime camera, among some other sensors. Right here in the middle is this amazing keyboard. It feels great when typing on, and the color combination with the black accenting to the space gray on the MacBook Pro looks spot on. On either side of that, you have big speakers, very bassy and loud, which is great for sound. And then you have a very responsive touchpad in the middle. Now let's flip it over and pop the bottom so we can take a look on the inside. Now that we have the logic board removed, we can take a closer look at the inside of the chassis. First thing you'll notice is the six cell battery, followed by these two massive fans to keep the M1 chip cool, a speaker on either side of the battery, connection points for the Wi-Fi antenna that's within the hinge, and over here you have all the ports themselves. Now they are not directly attached to the logic board, but instead to the chassis, and these flex cables connect it to the logic board. Here we have the underside of the logic board. You'll notice this little cable right here. That is actually the connection to the battery for the logic board. On this side, you have the only two integrated ports on the logic board, the SD card slot and the HDMI port. Under these here are the various chips and converters for those ports. Right here, you have the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chip. These chips here are for the power delivery on the USB and Thunderbolt ports. And then right here, and right here, we have the amplifiers for the two speakers. Now let's flip it over and take a look on the top side. On the top side of the logic board, we have the flash chips for the storage with expansion ports to add more if you were to choose that option from the factory. Here we have the connection points for the various Thunderbolt ports with the Thunderbolt retimers underneath these two pieces here. This is the top side of the battery connection we pointed out earlier. You could find various power management chips underneath these pieces here. And of course, right here in the middle is the M1 Pro chip. The chip itself is underneath the heat spreader in the middle with RAM modules on either side. Now let's compare this M1 Pro to the M1 Max. Here we have the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips side by side to give you a visual comparison of what they look like. 
The M1 Pro is a little bit smaller than the M1 Max, but the M1 Pro only has up to a 16 core GPU, while the M1 Max has up to a 32 core GPU. On top of that, the M1 Pro only has two RAM modules with a maximum capacity of 32 gigabytes, while the M1 Max has four RAM modules with a maximum capacity of 64 gigabytes. Besides the differences on the chips themselves, the logic boards themselves look nearly identical. Let's go ahead and get this all back together and run some benchmarking. To measure the performance of these two 16-inch MacBook Pros, we went ahead and ran our standard set of benchmark tools. Those tools being Geekbench, GFX Bench, and Blackmagic's Disk Speed Test. Geekbench is a popular general purpose benchmark tool that focuses on CPU performance and compares it to other systems. GFX Bench measures graphical performance by determining how long it takes to render certain standardized scenes. For this test, we use 1080p Manhattan off-screen. And finally, Blackmagic's Disk Speed Test shows transfer speeds of the internal SSD to give us an idea of how fast it could read and write data on the drive. With the M1 Pro, Geekbench returned a single-core score of 1,745 and a multi-core score of 12,658. GFX Bench displayed 894 frames per second, and Disk Speed Test performed writes at 4.8 gigabytes per second and reads at 5.4 gigabytes per second. With the M1 Max, Geekbench got a single core score of 1,777 and a multi-core score of 12,706. GFX Bench achieved 1,283 frames per second, while Disk Speed Test showed writes of 6.3 gigabytes per second and reads of 5.4 gigabytes per second. The tests we ran on these two MacBook Pros showed they are quite the powerhouses. The M1 Max here, for example, was able to achieve over a thousand frames per second on our video test. That is insane. Not to mention the internal SSDs in both of these being able to read in gigabytes per second as opposed to megabytes per second is always a plus. And now, although these machines are very impressive, we do have a few things that can make them even more impressive. This MacBook Pro is a powerhouse, but we could increase the functionality of it with our Thunder Bay Flex 8. It is an eight drive RAID capable storage solution to massively increase the storage capability of your host. Not to mention four of those drive slots are NVMe compatible for even speedier storage. It also has an internal PCI expansion slot for any PCI card you may have. It has docking to add even more ports, such as a CF Express card, and it has power delivery to keep your devices charged when in use. It's a lot of function in just one unit. If you'd like some portable storage, we have the Envoy Pro FX. This is compatible over both USB and Thunderbolt, so you could use it on a wide range of host devices, such as your MacBook Pro, iPads and iPhones. It has an M.2 drive inside, so you'll always have the speediest of storage. Not to mention, we also include this really cool adapter on the cable, so you never have to worry about which cable you're gonna be using. We have a lot of great products to use with this MacBook Pro. Unfortunately, it could be a bit of a hassle plugging them in and unplugging them anytime you wanna move your MacBook. To make that process a little bit simpler, we have the Thunderbolt 4 dock. This allows you to connect all these devices to your MacBook with a single cable. Given that it's Thunderbolt 4, it also takes full advantage of the Thunderbolt 4 ports within your Mac. It has numerous Thunderbolt and USB ports for storage, displays, and accessories like keyboards and mice, Ethernet for networking, and power delivery so you could always keep your devices charged while using it. And again, this dock allows us to plug all that in with just one cable. That has been our look at these 2021 16-inch MacBook Pros from Apple, one with the M1 Pro chip, the other with the M1 Max chip. We took a peek in the inside, ran some benchmarks, and looked at a few ways you could expand their functionality. My personal opinion is that they have excellent build quality, which is what we've come to expect from Apple, they perform amazingly fast, and the return of additional ports is a step in the right direction for increased connectivity. If you'd like to take advantage of that connectivity, visit MacSales.com for a wide range of products and solutions for these or any Macs. 
And don't forget to visit the Rocket Yard blog for more tips and tricks. For OWC, I'm Brady. Have a good day, everyone.